Good morning, everybody. Today is uh, March 26th, Sunday, 2023, and I have built something really cool for the car that I'm excited to show you guys what I built and how I built it. This is the stock uh, pump that circulates the water through the supercharger uh, that came off of my donor 2010 Camaro. It's a really ugly pump and, uh, you know, rubber hoses connect to it. This is the reservoir. Uh, again, ugly rubber hoses connect to it. I just couldn't bring myself to put something that ugly under the hood of this car. And as a result, there it is right there. I built that pump and reservoir assembly that you see behind me there. Uh, everything is, uh, you know, steel braided lines and uh, aluminum construction, uh, a little CNC uh, pump. And it just looks really, really good compared to uh, what I was going to use from the stock application. So uh, I just decided I want to make a quick video and show you guys how I built that. And uh, check it out, man. I thought it came out pretty good. So to build this assembly, I got myself a Mazir uh, little water pump. I'll put a link down below in the description of that. The next thing I did was I got myself some 3-inch diameter, 8 inch thick aluminum tubing. I put that into my lathe and got that cleaned up to where it was looking good. Uh, from there, I knew I had to, uh, to get a, a cap on one end to cap it off, and then a cap for the other end that had a hole in it. So I used my CNC plasma cutter uh, to cut me out a couple of circular discs got those welded in place along with the little threaded bung on the top of it for my uh, my vented cap this is a shot of the aluminum fittings that i had to weld into the reservoir and from there i just started boring holes and getting those things tacked into place it is worth mentioning that you want to be careful on your reservoir you're going to have an incoming and an outgoing port you want your outgoing port that feeds uh, your pump to be lower than your incoming port so you got to make sure that those things are vertically staggered once I had my reservoir built, I basically just connected it to my pump, and then, uh, you know, in order to simulate it being in the car, I just pretty much took a hose and connected one side to the other to make it a circular system, uh, poured some water into it, and then hooked it up to electrical power just to check it for leaks, uh, make sure that none of my welds were faulty, because if we're being honest, I am not exactly a professional aluminum TIG welder. Now it came time to build the bracket that holds it to the side of my Detroit Speed inner fender, which sits at an angle. That bracket is nothing more than a, just a rectangular piece of 1 8 inch aluminum plate that I put three bends in using my brake. Uh, I will tell you that sometimes it really comes in handy to know a little bit of trigonometry to make sure that everything lines up the way that you want it to. Uh, you know, nothing overlaps excessively. And at the end of the day, my reservoir there is perfectly straight up and down, thanks to trigonometry. Once I had my reservoir made and my mount made, it was time to build a couple of brackets that would ultimately secure my reservoir to my bracket right here. And I used the CNC to make this really nice looking little bracket, which once it's in place looks fantastic. The only problem is, is my aluminum welding sucks. And golly, man, have a look at this shot here. I don't know how I'm going to clean up these welds, but i got to do something because they just look absolutely terrible. I did make a bracket that goes on the bottom side, and the welds turned out better there, but thank God they're on the bottom, so nobody can see them anyway. Again, you know, the heat exchanger that I took out of the 2010 Camaro donor car, which is that right there, it's being covered up by some cardboard, it had these rubber hose slip-on connections where you would use like a hose clamp, you know, to connect your hoses to that heat exchanger. And so what I did was I cut those off, as you can see in this shot right here, and then I welded on some male 10A in uh, threaded bungs. And you can, you can see like the welds turned out way better there. And I absolutely love that I have nice looking welds on the bottom of the car where you'd have to, you know, get on a creeper and roll underneath the car to actually see those. But the ones that are right up top, front and center, where you're gonna see when you open the hood, they look like shit. At this point, I had the entire system built, and I wanted to go ahead and test it again, so I just filled it up with some, uh, some water and hooked it up to a battery, made sure that, again, I had no leaks anywhere. I didn't. Everything seals up fantastic, which is just shocking to me that my welds are actually watertight. I can't believe that. One of the things that I'll share with you uh, is back here in the back of the motor, you see that I've got those uh, those fittings right there. Those, again, are, you know, um, not 10 AN threaded connections. Uh, I actually had to buy some adapters from Autoplum that would allow me to hook up. There they are right there. To hook up, uh, you know, threaded lines to those. So I'll put a link down below to Autoplum where I got those uh, little adapters. 
and I'm also going to go back and ultimately that uh, that port that you see right there, that 90, I'm going to order a low profile port because those two things are just right up against each other and they are hitting each other. So I'm going to basically have one that's a really sharp 90 and one that's a big curving 90 so that hopefully those hoses just kind of follow each other and they don't bump into each other. So it's just terribly common when you're doing this kind of stuff that you lay out in your head how you think everything is going to go. You put it together and then it doesn't quite fit the way that you thought it would. And of course, as a result, you end up buying some different fittings to make everything fit nicely. It just kind of is what it is. Believe it or not, but the cost to be able to do away with that little pump right there and that ugly looking little reservoir and to build all of this, the pump, all the fittings, the lines, the aluminum, everything... 550 600 bucks to do all of this um you know <laughs> financially reasonable no no not at all but i think at the end of the day it really uh changes everything you know on the underhood of the car the theme of this car is comfortable race car so when you see it and when you ride in it you're supposed to feel like you're in a race car but it has to be comfortable so i think that uh you know doing this behind me here really changed you know things under the hood to kind of give it a much more race car look and feel to it so anyways pretty happy with it like subscribe follow along all of that if you guys want to make sure you don't miss my videos if you got questions by all means ask them below i very commonly answer all the questions in the comments you guys have a great afternoon y'all take care